So let's change the scene. Let's see what we have. Um, I mean, Should Crumbly be definitely now. seems to be one of the big players, let's say, in this whole discussion. Um, is you know, using his statistics and things of that nature. Like he's definitely involved in 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 this whole uh, debacle. Um, and the problem is, it gets. Mm -hmm. It touches a very weird spot, right? I mean, he's starting to get death threats and uh, like this is very, very nasty stuff, right? You don't want to get to that point. Um, okay, then is, you get this is the internet. Right? Yeah, the internet is <laughs> whatever. It's, it's, whenever it's you put yourself out on the spot. internet, you get some. Very uh, true. Yes. Like uh, I've gotten threats for no reason. I mean, uh, but okay. death threats. I mean. Yeah, like uh, he's been publishing this type of messages. Like, I know where you are. I know where you live. You're going to like. No, of course, this this is this is bad. Yeah, this is very really so mm -hmm. bad. I mean, well, that goes without saying. But uh, this is the internet, and even before I was like very public, like I think when I was like 18, I got some messages like I'm going to kill your parents. Really? Oh, There's wow. some weird like people are just nuts on online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, you think? I wasn't even like a public figure in any way. I was just like a young kid playing chess. So there was absolutely no reason for this one. I mean, I understand if like people uh, now don't like what I have to say and they get upset at me. Okay, it comes mm -hmm. with the territory. But, exactly. But back then, yeah. it was just ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, of course, that that's very bad. Um, the whole statistics thing is uh, is of course funny now because we have both sides saying. These numbers say this, and the, these numbers say that. Both sides are, well, I don't know if I call them sides, but different people are saying, well, I have these numbers that prove that uh, this person cheated. I have these numbers that prove that nobody is cheating, and and mm -hmm. so on. True. I find it kind of funny because, of course, if you play around with the numbers, you can prove anything. Correct. Definitely I saw, true as well. Um, that there was a statistician who, who compared over the board ratings to online ratings and found that they were consistent mm -hmm. showing that there was nothing very irregular and i think this is the guy that um danny also mentioned and chess.com mentioned and um i think he was trying to kind of fight off what we said that people got more suspicious after covid and yeah it was basically yeah, was the, the point that no they haven't yeah this was the idea that things have stayed consistent there's yeah. been no uh, nothing looks super weird now that didn't look super weird then, right? Mm -hmm. So things look like they've remained kind of constant. Mm -hmm. And people who perform well over the board, they perform well online. Uh, I think that this is like easily refuted. Like very easily for, for a number of reasons. To start with, it is actually a number of consistent players who play well in prize events online. But see, here's it, it the problem. Like it's, it's not too difficult to dig. But you see, here's the problem, you guys, when we look at this. The problem with what Fabian was saying, like, I, I don't disagree with him, but the problem with it, there, there are a couple of problems. The first big problem with what with what, what, what Fabian was saying is he's not actually mentioning names. Like, he one, he's also kind of saying they're very specific examples, but he's not saying who these people are. And it seems very clear to me that he has people in his head as well that he's thinking about when he says this. Um... Let, let him finish. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think he's going to say names. So if I had to guess, but it seems to me that he's saying this and like, it feels like there probably are two or three people he's referring to, but he's not saying the names through like who the prize winners are. I mean, I'm, I'm among them. I'm not like near the top, let's say, but I'm among the prize winners and, uh, and you have some guys who are top players among the, like the big prize mm -hmm. winners, like, but Carl. see, like, here's the problem. Like, here's the problem. So like, I'll use today, I'll use today, for example, <laughs> as a good, I mean, y'all use today's, today's match. Like when I started the stream today, I played against this kid, Jim DeGrease. Um, and I, I don't know what his actual name is, but people said he's like a 13 year old kid. He's like 3,100 and blitz. Like in my day, when I was growing up, that was impossible. It was just not possible. But kids these days are getting so much better at quicker rates. And also a lot of these kids, for example, don't have the opportunity to play over the board. So like when you look at this Jim Degrees guy, or you look at, um, I think it's Erdo Erdo or Erdogmus, if I'm not mistaken, who's, um, who's uh, from Turkey, like these kids are so young, but they don't have the opportunity to compete as much. And I think there are less tournaments, maybe less tournaments is the wrong way of putting it, but I feel like on average, it's a lot harder now to try and find as many over the board events. Now, when these kids have a chance to play over the board, we'll see what their skill level is. Um, 
But to me, it seems very difficult because there aren't the same amount of tournaments for a lot of these people who are playing online. To me, it seems very clear that that's one of the, the biggest issues at the present moment. Uh, born in 2010, LOL. Welcome to my life, you guys. Makes me feel really, really old. Um, so anyway, let's keep going. Perugia. Magnus. One of the big, yeah. Magnus. Uh... I mean, he won quite a few since he started playing. Andreken is one of the, let's say, I don't know if you call, it, call him a top player now, but he's been one of the like mm -hmm. 27, 30 guys for a decade plus. So he, let's say he's one of the other big winners. So you do have some big winners. The question is, are they also big winners in terms of on, over the board chess? Of course, when we speak about Magnus Icaro, it's like it's a pretty obvious, mm -hmm. right? These are big winners over the board. For well. Uja too. Uh, when it comes to like over the board ratings, you really do have to look into what an over the board rating is. And I can, I can tell you a few reasons why. Like when it comes to over the board ratings, uh, let's say someone has a rating that is 2700. But that rating was achieved when the K factor was higher. Mm -hmm. Because Blitz and Rapid rating K factors were at some point K20 yes. rather than K10. This is true. So let's say at some point it was very easy to, yes. if you have a good tournament. Now, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want to actually really, I, I don't want to... Um... I, I don't want to point something. I don't, I don't really like, I don't mean this in a bad way, but like, I'll tell you guys how it works. So basically I think there are conditions that are offered to players who are over 2,700 chess in, in any, or, or who are over 2,700 level in any format. And for a long time, there was one player who I think in rapid kept their rating at like 2,700 by playing one tournament a year in Italy. I think now his rating has gone off the cliff because he actually played the world rapid and blitz, but there's this player, Sabino Brunello from Italy, who I think when the, when the rapid and blitz ratings first came out, he did really well in like two or three terms. He got this rating up to 2,700 um, in rapid chess so that he would get these invitations or not invitations but when he played the would, would play the world rapid and blitzer things he'd have a 2700 plus rating and he'd get better conditions now eventually of course he played in the world rapid and blitz he got smoked his rating i think is much lower now um because he shouldn't have been that high but there are people who who did get their ratings up to that level in the past for sure uh -huh. and there are also people who have sat on their ratings for years and years also true and so if someone achieves a rating because a long time ago they gained 100 points and then in the last three, four years they haven't played much at all. Uh -huh. Then those rating becomes a bit less meaningful. Yeah, also true. So I started yeah, to think about like true. what very true. a meaningful rating is because of course now people are using ratings and numbers to justify or to explain all sorts of things. Like online ratings, chess.com ratings, I feel are more or less meaningless. That's interesting. Okay. And I'll give you a like, perfect example. When he says meaningless, I'll give you guys a perfect example. So I think I was on chess.com the other day, and there were people who were asking me to play against uh, Prague, Prag Nananta from India. And of course, I wasn't going to play Prague because Prague's rating was a very lowly 2995, I think it was, or 2996. Um, so Prague's rating was 2996. Now, is that Prague's actual level? Of course, that's not his level because he played against Nihal Sarin, also from India. I don't know where they play their blitz match, but he actually smoked Nihal by a score of seven and a half to two and a half. But his rating on chess.com is like 2990 or something ridiculous. So his rating is much lower than it should be. And there are many people who are like this where the ratings are all over the place. So like if you play a lot online, your rating is obviously going to be where it should be or close to it. If you don't play a lot, you can have a very low rating the way that, um, the way that Prague does, for example, in Blitz, even though Prague is a very, very good Blitz player. This was with, with Kremnik. He was like, uh, he used these numbers, like uh, he covers this rating and he's beating these rating people. I don't know what a 2900 is on chess.com. Well, to give you an example. Exactly, uh, yes. Because I looked at all of his opponents in real life. Um, one of them had a 2430 Blitz rating. One of them had a 2080 Blitz rating. Um, and that's exactly what you were saying. Some people have sit on the rating. Some people have actually not played enough yeah. Blitz tournaments or rapid. Yeah, over the board, certainly, because, yeah. You know, classical is still, let's say, um, the most accustomed. Um, he meant 2080, 2080. Control. But yes, the point being. Yeah, for I'll just give... Chess.com are not really... Chess.com ratings are definitely not really... Yeah, yeah. This is what I, one thing I'm saying. And to, to go to your point, let's say the young, talented kids... At some point, we're all like 1800 blitz and rapid ratings, like Prague, Prague Nihal. Was like they were, they were 2650 to 2700 <laughs> yeah. in classical, and they just didn't play blitz and rapid chess. Yeah. True. So you can throw these ratings out Very of the window. True. And I don't know who you're talking about with the 2080, but it's, um, uh, of course, I would rather like look at the FIDE ratings and see if those are reliable than look at the chess.com ratings because I think we know those can't be reliable. Mm 
Mm. And the reason, mm-hmm. not it's not that I'm saying that this person doesn't deserve their rating. I'm just saying that when it comes to Blitz Chess on Chess.com, we're not talking about one consistent time control. We're talking about all sorts of things. Yeah. We're talking about three minute with no increment. We're talking about five minute with two seconds increment. We're talking about this one. and that. And also we're yeah. talking about players who can curate their opponents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you play over the board, you cannot choose your opponents. You get who you get. Yep. You can Very try to choose your tournaments and sometimes people do manipulate their ratings. There are some famous cases of people who, let's say, get 2,800 in Blitz FIDE because they beat 1,800s. They're a grandmaster and they beat 1,800s 15 out of 15 mm-hmm. games and they do this for years. They get 0.8. Yeah, win. and they just like slowly And of course, accumulate. when Fabiano refers to this, he's referring to the famous case of there was a, I think there was a Ukrainian chess player a, a while back. I think his name was Shkuro, if I'm not mistaken, who had his, he had a blitz rating of like 2850 because he would literally go and play, a, a play tournaments in Ukraine against, I think like tournaments that had nobody who was stronger than 2400. So I think for a while there was this guy, Yuri Shkuro from Ukraine who had a blitz rating at 2850. And it was a common joke, like between Fabiano, Levon, and ma- many others that there was this one guy who was like, up amongst all the rest of us. So that's who he's talking about here when he's talking about the uh, the Blitz rating. Blitz rating. Uh, but it's much it's much less easy to do this over the board than to do this online, where I can literally just pick my opponent. Uh, they call it farming, right? Like we see <laughs> Karu beats the same guy 18 times in a row. Yep. And it's not because... They have because... a list of players that are uh, active. They challenge somebody that they know they can yeah. beat easily. And, and then, then they go farm that. Yeah, and then this Hikaru, who is a top blitz player, decides I'm going to beat this guy uh, a million times in a row and slowly take take his rating a little bit, and he gets 33 whatever. Uh, so Hikaru is 3350, and Ali Reza is 3050. Right, which now, is wrong, of course. Hikaru is, let's say, a more successful blitz player than Ali Reza, but he is not 300 points higher. Of course. Exactly. So we understand that the yeah. reason this happened is because Hikaru is gaming the system in some way by farming some people. It's not It's not against the rules. There's nothing wrong with it. It's for entertainment anyway. It's yes. for it's, it's to entertain his viewers. And, mm-hmm. and Ali Reza doesn't do this. But the result is that we get two ratings that are more or less not very meaningful because Agreed. they're very close mm-hmm. in strength. Yes. So they're not 300 points apart in strength. That's that's all I'm saying about chess.com ratings. No, he's this, Fabiano is absolutely right here when he says this. He's absolutely right. I use Prague, but you could use you could use Alarez, although Alarez's rating has gotten a lot higher. But it's very true, for example. Like Prague and Anta at 2996, he is not 300 points weaker than I am. He's not. He just doesn't play as much online. So it's like who plays a lot of blitz, who plays with increment, no increment, all these different things, all these different factors matter. Um, when we talk about the online ratings. And he's right. Like, I'm not 300 points better than Prague and Anta. I'm not 300 points better than Ali Reza, but they don't play a lot. Uh, they don't play a lot online. He also plays much more than everybody else, and the swings are much more often, right? He can go 3350, but he also mm-hmm. comes back to like 3200. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ali Reza also goes from 3050 to 3200 occasionally, but he plays way less than Hikaru. Well, so he probably only plays regular, like regular. Title Tuesday for the most part. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I can give you an extreme example. There's some guy who is like 3350 in Bullet mm-hmm. on Chess.com. It's like impossible. The guy's not even titled. Arcady Chrome. I don't, even, I don't know if he's not titled. It doesn't show a title. Maybe he is a title player. But for all we know, this is not a professional player. Mm-hmm. So why is he beating all these amazing players like Danya and Hikaru and whoever else? I've never, I actually rating? don't think I've ever played Well, it's because guy. he plays 10 second chess, mm. which let's be honest here. It's actually not chess. Yeah. <laughs> 10 second is literally just moving as fast as you can. I actually I watched some games between him and Andrew Tang. It's like playing a video game. How fast can you move the pieces? <laughs> And they mostly blunder all their pieces very quickly. <laughs> Sometimes they actually do play impressively well for 10 seconds. I could never do what they do, but it's not chess. Like, let's let's be real. Agreed. So when we talk about chess.com ratings, we're talking about all sorts of things. We're talking about 10-second chess. We're talking about 10-minute chess. And it really doesn't have meaning, which means that the streaks don't have meaning, which means that we can't read in, into them. It's just, that's the truth. Uh-huh. Um. I'm not saying that we should trust anyone on principle. Hikaru or Magnus or whoever, mm-hmm. or me or Ali Reza. Um, although I do trust them. I'm just, But we can't go reading into numbers that have no meaning. And likewise, we can't read into FIDE ratings if someone hasn't played in the last three years. So everything has to be looked at individually. It's not something that you can just start crunching numbers and, and you're going to find an answer. Uh, but... There is absolutely no way to deny that 
cheating does occur, and I think it's pretty mm -hmm. significant online. And uh, yeah, did you sign the petition? <laughs> Friends? Yes. No, I mean, I okay. If they want to investigate, if they don't want to, I don't care. I mean, um, I didn't sign the the petition. No. I bet. I bet you though. Somebody probably signed the petition as Fabiano. I bet somebody signed it as him. I would. I would be shocked if if someone did not sign it as Fabiano. Like sign it. Fabiano Caruana was something something written. I, I guarantee you, someone must have signed it as signed it and pretended to be Fabiano. I like my name. I think appears. Dozens oh, of times. It does. Me. Oh, it does. It does. Oh, it does. No kidding. <laughs> Fabiano Caruana writes, BD must revoke all titles from Hikaru. Cheaters don't belong in chess. Fabi signed it 10 times. Okay, wow. Hilarious. This is great. But I didn't. <laughs> um, I, I saw Magnus was there. Uh, Hans was there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this petition, of course, definitely. is uh, unfortunately not really meaningful because uh, anyone can sign it, and people don't have to be serious about it. Right. Well, as, an, ex as an example, you know who else? All, you know who else also signed the petition? I saw that even Joseph Stalin signed it. So, uh, I think that I think I think that says a lot. Uh, Paul Morphy signed as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Generally correct that we should not trust anyone on principle, and we should take a like firmer approach to cheating those general things i definitely agree with him on yeah mm -hmm. yeah no absolutely i i just don't think he went rightly uh, in the direction that he should have been by accusing and again he says that he hasn't accused hikaru so let, let's just put that out there he never said that he accuses hikaru directly again he said some things are interesting then people started looking at what those things were and they found hikaru's name um around there so okay but let's yeah. like also i don't know it's uh, kind of tiptoeing around it yeah i mean yeah i, I don't know it's reason. like also people start to mock the stuff like the words interesting indication yeah, so. mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah in general i think you should also be clear cut with if you're when you saying someone suit. well you don't have to do it up publicly you can also do it privately if you true want. Yeah. i mean you don't have to like take things to twitter as well like all the people I've been suspicious of, I've I've only, um, uh, like spoken to people internally. Yeah. Like what? Let's say I have a, a suspicion of chess.com. I've I've uh, spoken to someone who I feel can like, um, either investigate them or uh, is in charge of like their anti-cheating or whatever. So. I'd rather, and I think that mm -hmm. anyone can can but do you this. You have access. You have access to those. Oh, people. but you can put a report in. I mean, they they yeah. look at the reports. Um, yeah, of course, I know people personally as well, so I can talk yeah. to them and discuss if uh, if my suspicions are overblown or, because of course, I've been suspicious wrongly at times, and I've been suspicious correctly at times. Uh huh. I mean, it goes both ways. Um, yeah, and that's kind of where. Kramnik is coming from, and that's what he said. He said that he expressed this. Um, um, why you guys are saying why is Fabi why, why is Fabiano so hesitant to um, to to call out Kramnik's behavior for what it is? He's, he obviously knows what's going on with Kramnik's behavior. I'm gonna assume that the reason Fabiano is not saying anything is because some of the some of some of the some of the threats that have been made. Um, in relation to legal stuff. That's that's why I don't think Fabiano is going to say anything for that exact reason. Chess.com, and he did not get a response, a direct response, so now he has to go public. That's basically how it all came to be, more or less. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very sticky situation. Um, I'm seeing it come, popping up in the press, in the international press as well. I think the Independent, um, the For Forbes has also picked up the story. So there's a lot of, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, media interest for sure. There's always media interest whenever we're talking about cheating. It seems like it's Hans cheating. Now it's the big Vladimir and 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 Hikaru situation. We'll yeah, see, see how, how they don't develops. say it here. There, there's okay, a reason I mean, they don't the say it. That's Hikaru why situation will not develop. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I can already. I can tell you. I I, I don't need to. I have a crystal ball to tell you the future of the story is that nothing will develop.
No, of course not. But then you have, uh, you know, Vladimir saying that he's going to sue Chess.com if they don't issue an official apology. Uh, and I don't, I haven't seen the official apology um, or Chess.com retracting their statement. I haven't seen that. So you, I have no idea where this is going to go, to be honest. Yeah, like I played chess for a long time and I, I never really remember lawyers getting involved until exactly. last year. <laughs> yes. yes, very true. Now lawyers are like constantly being involved. And there's a lot of suing. Like there was a lawyer that made a statement about the... Hans today. The, well, Hans's lawyer made a statement about the tournament of peace, basically defending his client, right? What, what do you expect? Um, and now, well, there was a lawsuit last year and now another lawsuit is being proposed. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> like we should probably try to resolve things without lawyers that's, for the most part that would be exactly that would, that would be nice yeah yeah so that's uh the situation that has been happening has been developing in the last couple of weeks uh but of course let's let's talk oh the, the cam died question oh uh, the cam just died one second uh died again one second Yeah, so, okay, let's keep going. Of Canada's spots as well, because obviously the Singful Cup has been extremely consequential. There are a lot of calculations uh, being drawn. Um, Is that who's, it? Who's on top right now? So, obviously, you're going... I think that's it. That's it, pretty much. So... All right, let's let's move on um, to our next bit, which I think is there's apparently some new blog as well. So, what do we have? Um, for Fabiano Caruana on farming... I have listened to Fabiano Caruana's podcast explaining the ratings on chess.com do not correspond to the real strength of players if they are farming because you can choose your opponents and players not farming don't. It is partly true, but sorry, Fabiano. Bit superficial explanation just stopped too early. Wow. Look at this. Even Cram even here, Kramnik does not have the uh, does not have the humility to show some respect to Fabiano. He doesn't even have the respect to show, he, he doesn't have even have respect for Fabiano. I mean, it's just incredible how someone who is such a great chess player, someone who we all have a lot of respect for, for his game, um, has basically just completely gone off the deep end. I mean, it, it was it was already bad enough, but now it's like, okay, sorry, Fabiano, you also don't know anything either, essentially. Very sad to see. Okay, um, let us continue the logical chain. First, before doing that, I would like to mention that in some way anyone playing some friendly games on chess.com is farming because it is his or her free choice to play or not against each opponent. Okay. Now the main point, let us imagine a farming, uh, let us imagine player A farming opponents and playing players B, C, D in matches, consistently gaining lots of ratings. Let's put aside ethical considerations and concentrate on pure math and logic. So already here, ethical considerations. It's it's ethical. Like you go online to play blitz chess, and now it's not ethical to play someone like weaker than you. Like it, I mean, seriously, jeez. Um, yeah, it's not ethical, right? Yes. There are four possible scenarios in any match played on chess.com. Number one, both players are cheating. In such case, both players should be banned after the examination. Number two, both players are playing fair and always were in the past. In such a case, why there is such an over and under performance of each player involved? There must be an examination of the mathematical probability of such a scenario happening based on correct parameters and not those wrong as used according to the latest statement of chess.com. See my post explaining why that research, if it was ever done, was not correct. Once again, he is not he has not answered the most important part of this, um, which is that uh which is that the fact that everyone's playing different time controls. If you look at three plus one, which is obviously titled Tuesday, for example, it's one thing. It's completely different. Everybody performs much lower on average. Now, Magnus, of course, won the title Tuesday yesterday, which was, in my opinion, maybe even statistically, ha ha ha, probably the strongest title Tuesday ever with 10 and a half points out of 11. But on average, players are much weaker because, or not weaker, but the performance is much weaker because everybody is so strong in title Tuesday. That's the, that's the first thing. Um, so he once again does not answer answer this part of it, but let's keep going. After conducting such an examination correctly, which of course is also showing once again no humility here from Kramnik, in case the math probability of the scenario is very low, we move to the two remaining options. Now, you know what's great about this? There is actually a mathematical paper, just to be very clear, that was published on this specifically. Uh, I think it was from the University of Chicago. It was published on statistics, basically showing that Kramnik is wrong. And yet he still is trying to argue a losing, basically a losing. Lo he's trying to fight a losing bat. Anyway. Number three, the winning side was cheating in that match, those matches, or the losing side has an artificially far too high rating, meaning he was cheating. 
Oh my gosh, before we get to the rating, and this time he didn't, which explains such a low probability underperformance. Does Kramnik not understand that farming exists across the gamut? It does not just exist at the very top. If my rating is 2,700 in Blitz, and I can't find someone who's much higher, like 2,900, or someone who's 2,700, I might be playing 2,500 and beating them down the exact same way. How does he not understand this? It's unbelievable, actually. He doesn't understand this. He's literally ignoring the possibility that people across the whole gamut can basically be farming farming each other. It's just unbelievable. And this is what happens when you have someone who does not come from the come from the computer age, someone who does not play a lot online, does not understand the culture. And frankly, for someone like Kramnik, why would he go online and play against someone random? He wouldn't, because at the end of the day, he only wants to play against the best players. So he probably wants to show his his love the level of his play. He also wants to show great opening theory and show that he can still compete. So again, this is the problem. He doesn't understand the whole culture and he's acting as though farming doesn't exist across the board. Um Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, in this ca in the case of variations three and four, one of the participants of such a match must be banned. Okay, in any case, wait. See, but again, he misses the point because his argument is it's, artifi it's artificially inflated because he was cheating. In is he now saying, is, he is Kramnik saying that farming is cheating? Is that what he's saying? Because that's essentially what he has to be saying here, if that's what he's saying. I mean, that's that has to be what he's saying when he says he was cheating. That's the only only rational explanation that you can reach, as far as I can tell. Um, so uh, anyway, let's let's keep going. In any case, both players' games and performances must be carefully examined because the scenario is one, three, and four. There's no variation. Both are playing fair and can continue playing on the platform. Therefore, correct calculation of the probability of such over and underperformance put together is critical. And since, according to the latest chess.com statement, it doesn't seem to me, and most importantly, other mathematicians I consult. Here we go again, Cranmick and his mathematicians. Um, bit uh that they perform it correctly for whatever reason my and 2300 other plus people signing the petition request to examine those several huge overperformance of gm hikaru and huge underperformance of his opponents in those matches is completely adequate once again this is so unbelievable to see it really is sad it really is sad to see this um from someone who's really really respected one of the greatest players of all time does not understand the petition most of those signatures are trolling on purpose, and he just does not get it. He doesn't understand online chess, and it's just very, very sad to see this happen from someone who so many of us had so much great respect for. Um, the response of Eric and Danny, which is extremely weak mathematically, is another proof that it was adequate and timely. If we want to improve anti-cheating measures and clean this place from as many cheaters as we can, if someone has opposite intentions and against such examinations in such cases, whoever are the players involved, they should state it openly, I suppose. Well, Kramnik also stated something. He can try to pretend that he didn't state it openly, but he did. So I don't really think Kramnik is anyone to be talking on this topic. I expect your thoughts on answering those points, Fabiano, as well as your choice of the insults of the above-mentioned chess streamer towards me. Wait, as well as your choice on the insults? Insults? Jeez, poor guy, poor guy. Yeah, with zero respect and sincere wishes to you to achieve what you are capable of achieving, the world championship title. This is really sad to see. I'm just going to say this is extremely sad to see the way that Kramnik has lost his mind. Um, there's really nothing more that needs to be said. He refers to mathematicians, does not give anything mathematical. He keeps referring to performances where I'm playing as players who are much weaker. And actually, I saw someone do... Um, Someone do some math where they looked at the average rating of the players we play. I play players on average who are 300 plus points lower rated than me. So it's very, very sad to see this. I mean, I think at some point, like, I don't know if it's chess.com or Fidi, but really either we have to completely ignore him or something has to be done about it. Because I don't think people should be allowed to ramble on and on like this to the end of time without any repercussions. That's how I feel about it, ultimately. Um because it's just, it, it's unbelievable to see this. Like, the fact that he doesn't realize the culture of online chess and farming, time controls, all these other things. I'll give you an example. There are probably players that I could play against who are 2,500 in Blitz that I could probably flag, like, pr pretty much every single game if I wanted to. And so then if you think about players I play who are 2,800, they can probably do most of the same thing. And they can probably do the exact same thing to 2,500s and just beat them over and over and over again. Um... So, yeah, it's very sad to see this. He literally ignores farming. Or he's saying he's ignoring farming, or he's basically saying farming is cheating. I don't know what he's saying. Um, but either way, it's, this is, it's amazing to see this. It really is. It's just amazing to see this. And um, it, really feels like, it really feels like it's desperation at this point to continue down this, down this path. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, obviously, at the end of the day. And, um, yeah, what to do, what to do. Um, I suppose Kramnik is pouting that Fabiano didn't didn't say enough for his approach stating his thoughts. 
I mean, there have been so many people who've done mathematical calculations on this who've point blank proven that Kramnik is wrong. He's just wrong. It's just that simple. Um, and these stats do happen. And the more games you play, the more games where you cherry pick your opponents. Um, did I see the Ken Regan podcast where he analyzed your records and explains the difference? I did not see that. I could definitely watch that if you guys want me to. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just very sad to see. It really is. Because it just shows like a complete lack of understanding of what online chess is. Um, that's that's the bottom line. It just shows a complete lack of understanding. Plain and simple, that's it. Um, I don't agree with him, but he still has the right to free speech on his blogs, but we don't have to read any of it, so no reason for repercussions. Maybe, maybe, but I, I, would, I would argue that when you're a former world champion, you have some, um, I mean, you have a certain duty, um, you know, you have a certain prom prominence to, to really, like, talk about things in, in a fair way. I mean, like, you know, it's like if you say... Um, you know, it's one thing, like, if you say that MAGA should be investigated, I should be investigated, whatever, or you, you say, you know, like, p people should be looking at her performance, of course they should be looking at her performance. I, in fact, I think that Chess.com looks very closely anytime anybody wins Title Tuesday. I think they look very, very closely. That's the bottom line. Um, but Kramnik clearly doesn't believe that, and I I really just, I don't know what's in his mind. I I, I don't know what's in his mind at this point, um, but it's just, it's just shocking to see, really. It's just shocking to see.